Welcome to the homeland of the Ains, the Fangorn Forest in an epic matchup between the best factions what could happen in this matchup. We have the Isengard player, the white Isengard player, the white hand, Rangel versus the red Rohan player, Zemix. Rohan against Isengard, Ains versus Saruman, can they take the revenge for burning their forest? One farm opening because you have plenty of settlements on this map and the peasants will split up to capture every single settlement. And the Hobbit is leading to this area. I'm assuming he is planning to creep, but the Uruks will make sure that they won't get away with it. Rohan has the potential to, you know, basically pump out more and more peasants, and which will make it kind of difficult for Eisen to defend all of that. But also Eisen will have a lot of money. He has in total three Lumber Mills for now. And that's going to give him also the wood bonus 15%. He will get... To build a furnace only for 297 instead of 350 but it's gonna be even cheaper now with the lumber mill number four one person was able to sneak through but the uruk is gonna be there just in time who's gonna get the last hit on the crypto that's gonna be big, the big question oh the uruk's got the last hit and also one part of the money that's great for aizen but the uruks don't get level two unlike the peasants they can still fight though they are still war chanted but they are being outnumbered now, and the second the Vorchan is off, the Uruks will get smashed. But, the you know, the, the plan here is to just stall and buy time for more Uruks to arrive from the Uruk pit. And one more peasant was able to arrive here. That's something the Rohan faction can do, but the Gondor faction can't do. Uh, the troll was getting lured to the settlement here, and that's why the settlement has been destroyed. I'm assuming he's trying to see for the, for the steeple, but he's cash floating a lot. He has over 10, uh, not 10, 1,000. But he's going to build now the steeple a little bit delete and also a farm. Fighting here, should be able to win the fight against the level 2 Uruks. Pippin is, um, not Pippin, that's Mary, sorry Mary, for calling you the full of a took. Got just rank 4. The farm is ready. Good looking map for both the factions though. Eisen just needs four Lumber Mills, that's all you need. Now you can build up the beast super quickly for 280 resources only. And we have the Uruk Pit level 2. Now he's gonna get some Berserkers to counter the Peasant Spam. The Steeple is gonna produce the first Rohirrim very, very soon. But on this map, you need to be prepared for the late game because there is no shot you can, you know, defeat Eisen early game. You need to do stuff what is required, what is required for the late game situation. We are talking about Eoma Theorin, you know, he's gonna lure the troll one more time to, to the farm. Deja vu, you know what I'm saying? He's making sure that the troll is on his side and this troll is gonna destroy the farm yet one more time. This has been destroyed. Warchan has been used on the Berserker and on the Uruks. And the Berserker will be able to smash them. And I think Mary has been killed. Yes, sir. Did he use Palanti for this? Nope. It's almost the industry for the for the first time. And this one has been protected too. And he's getting more and more peasants, but remember, the Uruk is now level 2. He will get Berserkers upon the field. And might go for Lourdes, might go for Sharko, might do for both, might go for both actually, because he will have the wealthiness and the economy advantage on a map like this, which kind of is good, amazing for Mordor faction, by the way. Mordor is low key the best faction on this map. The pikemen are coming, but the Lumber Mill will be destroyed before they arrive. So the full beast for Rohan. Will he go for the upgrades? Will he go for the heroes? You can go for Legolas, you can go for Gimli. They are both very great and they can both creep the Trollia solo. Gimli, of course, is a mean one. When he has the leap attack, you know, he will deal hella damage. The Berserker was able to deal with the peasants, but the peasants were able to destroy the Lumber Mill. That's pretty good for. Oh, he cannot attack this peasant, though. Repair it. Don't lose this to the one singular peasant. Oh my god. Oh, that's unlucky. That's unlucky. He could have saved this. But I think he didn't pay attention. The Rohirrim have to be careful. Don't trample into the pikemen, please. Okay, he's paying attention. And early game, you can deal with the peasants with the pikemen and berserker combination. But you want to make sure that the berserker has always the protection of the pikemen. Otherwise, they will get trampled and get killed by the Rohirrim over and over again. It's a great situation for Aizen. He has industry, already used it. Full bees, a level 2 furnace already. That's, the industry is going to help it to reach it to level 3 a bit faster. Rohan has to be fast if you want to do something. It looks like you want to go for Legolas, the prince of the Mirkwood Elves. So no, um, see it, no upgrades on the Rohirrim yet. Because in order, you can come... 
Oof, he lost the Rohirrim warrior there for no reason. In order to um, deny the Berserk to kill your peasants, what you can also do is give them forge plates and heavy armor. Then they will kill the Berserk in a one-on-one -on -one situation. And on this map, you will have such a good eco that you can upgrade all your peasants, really, you know? But even for Legolas, Legolas is a great hero for the late game situation, definitely. There is a Lord. Lord just used the cripple, though. That means Legolas can do whatever he wants. And without Carnage, even if he would cripple him, he can't kill him solo. Of course, he won't be solo. Lord has to be careful. Hawkstrike is going to be available. Boom! Oh my god, it's so close, actually. Lord will get away barely. Close, but not close enough. Legolas has to be careful. Troll doesn't know what to do. Do I go forward? Do I go back? He's punching the air. I don't know what he's planning to do. He's moonwalking. It looks like he's flying in the air, but he's going to be taken down by, by Legolas. And that's going to bring him to rank 2. And rank 7 will make Legolas to a hero-killing machine. He's great. Uh, sending out pikemen against Rohan is dangerous, because Rohan can basically recruit just one more peasant from the farm and make sure to protect it. So in order to fight for the map control effectively, Eisenplayer has to recruit some of the Vork Riders. Which he doesn't go for yet so far. He's gonna go for Saruman Rush. He has 4.7k. I like the outpost capture. I don't like the armory though, but he might not get be, he might not get be punished for this. However, there are some structures I would always like to build in my bees. And also the ar uh, archer range I would like to be uh, build in my bees. So when you lose the outpost, you lose the ability to get more elven warriors later on, you know what I'm saying? So Lord's gonna take this creep for free, that's gonna bring him to rank 4. Uh, rank 5 is obviously a huge power spike for the captain of the Uruks. And he's only one rank away from this. Legolas moving to the bottom side, he's gonna take yet another creep. That's gonna bring him also to rank 4. We'll, uh, we'll, uh, we'll unlock the train archers, but the Rohirrim warriors, he's not paying attention to them. Uh, he does in the last possible second. Lord's taking free experience here by killing those peasants. Beautiful. And the creeps at the top right corner are still remaining, which basically can be taken by Isengard. For now, the players are splitting the map in two pieces. So the wild Rohan player is controlling the bottom side of the map, Fangon Forest. Eisen is controlling the top side of the map, Fangon Forest. There comes the Elven Alliance Special Summon. Lord's will get killed from the elves. The Uruk must pay. Legolas taking free... Or rank 5 immediately, actually. He has now also the power points for the... Uh, the... Okay, we got it, uh, Saruman. Uh, he has also the leadership for the Elven Warriors. But Lourdes will be revived. He's rank 4. It's going to take you 2 minutes and 15 seconds to get him back on the field. We've also Tearing King up on the field. And Rohan has to make sure that these creeps are not taken by... Ooh, the blast on your face, son. You should never let him creep... Uh, le let him blast you like this. Rank 9 is huge power spike, Forge Plates on the Rohirrim Warriors, Fireball, and Rank 7, just like a dead. In a dream world, you want to use this creep to level up your Theorin, though. Getting Theorin to level 4 and unlocking the Glorious Charge would be one of the best things you can do. Always add so much value to your army and so much strength and durability to your Rohirrim. Eisen Beast is going to become very much durable. Once all of these furnaces are going to hit rank 3, which is about to happen in about 2 to 3 minutes. Armory, he's purchased the Forge Bleeds, going for the Heavy Armor and Banner simultaneously. He can afford it, he has lots of cash. And Theorin hopefully will get ex at least experience from this. He did, but it's very, very little. If you leave him this solo creep, he's going to get rank 2. I know it's not a lot, but it's still a big step closer to the spike of the Glorious Charge. Armory for Aizen, captured, uh, purchased, fire arrows first, going for the for the banner carrier second, and then also needs to have heavy armor and forge bleeds. Against Rohan, you really need all the upgrades, and he's going to make the combo between pikemen and crossbowmen, which I don't like really a lot, because they have only the combo bonus of 10-person armor, the combo bonus of the Uruks and crossbowmen is just a bit better. So what you can do is make regular pikemen and put them in between your crossbowmen-Uruk combination. Uh, oh, he's gonna get crippled. You will die, son. Put on your sword, Lord Carnage. Playing with his foot a little bit and just get rank 5. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. In the meantime, the Rohan is uh, arm um, archer range level 2. He got all the upgrades from the armory, demolished it right after. And um, I'm assuming he wanna go for Elven Warriors, but I think he is not that rich. Actually, he is rich. 
he's gonna revive his Theodine. They never went for the Gimli. Gimli is, in my opinion, a very great hero for Rohan. Can, you know, basically force your opponent to cripple Gimli exclusively. And then this way your Lego and Theodine will be safe. If he doesn't cripple Gimli after, especially after his rank 5, he will lose his Lords and Saruman in exchange. So Gimli is gonna be the, um, the, the magnet for the cripple. If you are wondering how they get rank 3, when you use the train arches on the Yomon arches, at rank 1, they will get rank 3 immediately. It's going to turn them into a very strong combination. Hidden is going to be there very, very soon. Armory, uh, Fire purchased. Fireball has been used, but Isengard is prepared. He has double leadership with his heroes. With Warchand, it's going to be triple leadership. While Rohan has only one leadership, and it's going to be from the uh, Theodine, who's going to return from the graveyard very, very soon. But good looking map, a map for of the players actually outpost at the top side for Aizen he has triple furnace he's gonna print money the, out the damage output from this combo is nasty the damage is kind of crazy with lords you know what I'm saying so, but we're gonna be seeing a huge battle very very soon and I'm, I'm I'm liking this you know in a combo against combo battle it's very hard for Aizen for Rohan to win the fight because at some point, and the point is super close, Aizen will have the Freezing Rain available, which will negate all the leadership bonuses, making his combos even more threatening. They have heavy armor plus shields, they are super durable. That's a wasted war chant that won't do anything for you. Um, in those situations, when you see the Rohirrim are too tanky, you want to always manually aim on Theodian King. But that's a wasted war chant. That's a huge cooldown, which now Rohan has to use uh, for his own advantage. Train Arches can be used one more time to get them to rank three, rank 2 immediately. The Palantir is going to be used to see what's going on. But the Outpost, despite the used War Chant, will still be taken down. That's why you need to always place also a Pikeman near to the Outpost, just to avoid these kind of situations. A bunch of Elves, so Infantry style meta for Rohan. Something we don't see very often, but this map is kind of favoring the Infantry strategy. Because of the huge amount of Outpost you get. And with infantry, you can protect them a bit easier. And they are kind of blocking the entire pathway. This outpost is hard to be avoided. Same also for this outpost here. Which Isengard is rotating to. Warg pit has been built up. That's great for Isen. So the Warks will give you the chance to finally destroy those rank 3 farms. Which Rohan is now for the, for the majority of the time. Again, getting Super Rage. Going for Aragorn next. For even more damage leadership, that's going to be in total 90% more damage. And for the elves, even more. That's going to be, for elves, 110% more leadership. He has the power points to turn Aragorn to the King Eresar by purchasing the Anduri Sword, which also will be the case. And now he can rotate. That's a raw damage um, elven army, but he has not the money to upgrade every single one of them. Aizen needs to now come back. You can't avoid this army. I mean, you can't ignore this army. You can, you can also not avoid it. Because they will just go to your base. The map is looking better for Ize, uh, for Rohan, but the Vorgs are about to change this. Now, can he defend this though? Theorin has to oof, free experience here for the King of Rohan, but don't lose him. Bring him close to the to the army. Does he have Warchant? He should use it immediately. There comes the big Warchant. It's gonna be a huge battle, boys. He crippled Legolas, that's the best thing you can do. Rain is active, that's why leadership is no more active. And he needs to use the land, but the heal is coming a little bit too late. Uh, land will be covered by Aizen. And now this army will regain their leadership bonuses. Yorin is riding in front, taking all the damage from the sentry towers and will go down. That's why you need to always... Um, right forward unlike in the films i know in the films theodin was leading the army of rohirrim but that's not like in the films bro you, you don't have the pl plot armor you know what i'm saying you will die outpost captured by rohan he needs to now revive his legolas in theodin that's something he can't afford as we are talking but he will get the money eventually could also go for the grand, grand harvest on his farms to get even greater amount of resources and for whatever reason, he's refusing to recruit uh, the, the the dwarf out of, you know, from the Lonely Mountain. Oof. Bro, I have Fireball there, you know, that would be kind of crazy. 
Eisen is playing a little bit too passive though. Maybe he doesn't want to commit to the spot, which I would mm, argue about. When Theoden is dead, he has only the Aragorn in Stichu leadership and you outpower that with your v Lourdes, Saruman and Warchant, you have more leadership. And these combos are super vulnerable against Warg. So if you bring like one or two Warg Riders with the Warchant and Hole, he's chasing with the Palantir. One is, you know, moving in circles to avoid the Warg's potential hit. And it looks like he will get away. He's just waiting for Legolas and Lourdes, uh, for Legolas and Turing to come back. But Isengard army cannot be joked with. Isengard is now your new master. Okay, so and this is also a very strong army though. Do not underestimate that army. Look, Aragorn is the leader of this army. So that's gonna be uh, the question of the decades. Which army is stronger? When the arena is inactive and you make one single mistake, like stepping forward with your uh, with your Saruman, for example, and losing him for no reason, because the damage output from these dudes are, is, is going to be also quite diff high with the Legolas shooting at you non-stop. Wargs are doing a good job, though. We always got to take a look into the minimap. So the fight is going to break out very, very soon. Isengard is rotating. But on the line, they are even stronger. Okay, that's going to be a big fight, boys. Boom. Uh, beautiful level 6. Tilden is a little bit too far away from the army. On the land, he knows he's stronger. But the pikemen in the front are super weak against arrow damage. You can see they are getting still melted through the leadership. That's also a very strong leadership here for uh, Rohan. Aragorn is just... I don't know what why Aragorn is charging in. Fireball! But you see the damage as I'm talking about. Hoax Strike was not available. There comes the big heal. Aragorn is super tanky boy. Uh, with the Atelas. And also heal. He has also lots of sustain. Looking to trample. Trample! He's gonna steal them with the Warm Tongue. That's beautiful done. Aragorn has the chance to run away. Legolas is diving in a little bit too deep. Legolas is aiming on... on, on Ooh, he's gonna be finishing him. Rank 7 Legolas, boys. Beautiful. 10 power points now in the bank for uh, Rangel, the Isengard player. He has also a secondary army at the top side, rotating to the outpost from Rohan, which has zero protection. And Rohan has the end summon, which have been used. Ends have the home advantage on the map Fangon Forest. And a wizard must pay. Remember, Lourdes was able to get away, but the Orphan is gonna be the target, just like in the films. However, while this is happening, Isengard is taking over the map, you know, going for the out outpost top. He might go for the Siege Warks, he might go for the Ram, and he might try to bring the fight to Rohan. Instead of defending non-stop, you can also siege your opponent and force him to split the army in two pieces, you know? Rain is active, I believe. No, it's not active. But they have no leadership because Aragorn has been killed before. And I don't know where Theoden is. Theoden died again, Aragorn died again, that's why they have no leadership. Only the elves are glowing thanks to the leadership from um, Legolas, which is only available on the elves. Elven summon for more elves. Arrow Wall is available. Gotta be careful. Big commitment. Super glow on this army of Isengard. The ends are gonna burn. He wanted to desperately cripple Legolas, but in exchange he died. And I don't think he can finish him because the ends are marching and trampling and killing all the crossbowmen. In the meantime, outpost destroyed. I like the second Uruk pay technology because you get the steel bonus, making your Uruks and also crossbowmen a bit cheaper. You get 10% discount. What is Negoras doing there? I don't get it. Use your knife fighter, bro. Just run. Oh, but in the meantime, he's not paying attention because they are not attacking as they are from behind. And the outpost, oh, bad trample into the elves with the swords in their hands. Legolas is also, uh, Shark is also coming. I like this, bro. I like this idea a lot. Bring the fight to them. Uh, almost EOD and almost Balrog too.
Okay, almost GC. GC, glorious charge. I mean, if he doesn't react to this, he will lose the wall to the ram. Legolas, I don't know, don't die, bro. I can't watch. Just don't lose your army like this. Never mind. He's gonna be safe. Here's the EOD. And Balrog is about to be ready too. Remember, the evil factions get power points for losing stuff. So if he loses the army, he will get at least like a power point. So he will get, because he went also for the Palantir and also Tainted Land, these two power points are slowing him down a little bit. The Ram. Uh... Lords, Lords is here. Okay, Saruman is also almost back, rank 7. Outpost, under attack non-stop. That's why you always need to leave some defenses at the outpost. The archer range, that's what I was trying to say all along. Now you lost it, now that means no more elves anytime soon. You need to rebuild it and again recruit three human archers before your archer range is level 2. He's gonna you have to use the EOD defensively. That's a double situation for Isengard. That's exactly what you want. Now he has, he has not, not to kill the heroes in the main army, which is in the beast from Aizen. I mean, his lords and his Saruman are in the main beast. So, even if you kill this army, you use your uh, ultimate power point just to kill, like, two uh, battalions of the combos, you know? And Balrog is available in about the power point too. Okay, that's gonna be crazy. Is he gonna get it, though? Does he have GC? He has GC. He's gonna use it. Rain is on cooldown. Beautiful trample time. 20 power points. Now here's the Balrog. Is he gonna use it underneath? Is he gonna use it underneath? He's gonna use it underneath them. Boom. Son. Vip Theodine King. He's gonna fly like a butterfly. Use Vip. Legolas is in between the army. I don't know what he's doing. He's left alone. There's only counts as one Legolas. Nobody cares about Legolas, boy. Not Rohan and also not Isengard. I don't know what's happening. And of course, the longer the game goes on, the more mistakes will happen because they have to pay attention to multiple things simultaneously. Balrog is gonna fly one more time. But he won't have too much more time to do stuff. Maybe he can fly and use eventually a breath fire to destroy the gate. But even if he doesn't, Isen went already for the siege works. I mean, he's... Flying through the entire map, Fangon Forest. Vorks can't fight in a one-on-one -on -one situation against Rohirrim and the FD shields. That's not possible. And he also didn't use the whole ability. Cloudbreak is available. Legolas is gonna use the Hawk Strike. Boom! You finally saw him. The ends will be special summon. There comes the Cloudbreak for the stun. Cripple! Look the damage from Legolas, boys. Pew! Pew, 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 pew. Yeah, you can't, you just can't. Like, you can't win any range matchup against this dude. He's just hitting like a truck. And I think also, Theod yeah, Saruman didn't die. He put him inside the Tzita. Get out there, bro. And this game isn't over yet, by the way. Ron has reclaimed the outpost at the top side. Uh, he needs to reclaim the settlements too. I think his eco is not too bad because he has still plenty of rank 3 farms outside. Uh, rank 3 farms inside the beast too. But Aizen has, you know, the capacity of making two armies. You can't match the economical strength of Aizen with your Rohan faction when he has more than 3 Lambrimils outside. Legolas is a hero killer voice, rank 10. Something we don't see very often. And I like that. I really do like that. Outpost will go down one more time to the army of Isengard. EOD was used before the Balrog, so it's going to be available before. Rohan has not the money to revive his Aragorn. And I just can't stand the idea that he never went for Gimli. It's a long game, bro. The, you know, the chance that Gimli would be rank 5 by now is ultra high. Army is coming. He, he didn't even repair this part of the wall. Um, he needs 2.5k for this, by the way. Oof, he's gonna go for the Warchant play, potentially. Does he have Warchant? He does. Imagine a hoax strike as they are passing through this tiny pathway. That comes to Warchant. Oh, that's gonna hurt, bro. That's gonna really hurt. He has no EOD yet. Towering up. 
But this one tower came too much. He has two towers. Three. Use GC. Right now. Right for ruining the red zone. Death. This is really death because I think Rain is active. Yeah, Rain is active. The Glorious Charge. They don't slow down, but the pikemen in the front are still slaughtering. I think he's gonna... Does he have heal? If he has heal, he can win. Don't lose your king, bro. Don't lose your king, bro. Oh, he's gonna be actually safe. What a great defense. Beautiful. In the meantime, though, he's gonna lose the outpost at the bottom side. Aizen now has all the outposts. If that's gonna be stay like this, the Balrog is gonna be the game-winning move. The Balrog is gonna be the game-winning move. Aizenga did a better job with the map control in the mid-game. Rowan stopped caring. Even though when you get into a point in which you have like 10,000 resources, do not think that this is going to be enough to carry you until the very end of the game, you know? Because if you don't have to sustain your economy, if you don't keep getting resources over and over again, you will eventually spend the 10,000 you had in the bank and then you will be broke again. You need to always have to sustain. You have like 100,000, 200,000. The more money you will have, the less money your opponent will have. Map control has double effect. Legolas, by the way, rank 10, bro, is like super, super strong. My bow grows heavy. Now you are fine, bro. Choo! Well, these wargs are actually quite tanky against him, though. Not gonna lie. But he's gonna be still winning this. Nice. So, Eury is available, and Balrog is available in about a minute. Outpost has been recaptured by Rohan, but he lost all of his stuff over and over again. Again, kind of broke. So all Aizen has to do, really, is beat the... EOD before using your Balrog. Lourdes. Saruman, he's not reviving his Saruman either. I mean, also Aizen is not that rich because he's making army over and over again. Look, he has queued up, he has full population and upgrading all of this Isengard army with full upgrades is not a cheap, you know. But now as he has command points kept situation, he will grow rich. GC available. He has only regular combos here now. Against GC, that's not going to be great. This army can decimate this army easily. Lords and Vorks are coming. Rohan has not many farms remaining though. He has only three farms outside. And that's not enough. What you can do here is you can use GC. And oof, he's going to summon the Balrog. But the Rohirrim are way too swifty. They will disengage. Without getting hit. Now Rohan has to use the EOD defensively though. I think. They got us. Bows are no more useful here. Oh my god, he's 50. Can't touch this. Okay, I will let you live this one last time. Now he can't finish this. He's gonna summon EOD to defend this outpost though. He wanna kill the army, not the Balrog. Balrog is gonna get a breath fire off. It's not going to connect to the structure, but it connects to this structure. He didn't use Ignite, that's why he was not able to destroy this in one, one shot. Um, he will still destroy these structures though, but I think that's going to be the last thing he can do. However, destroying the level 3 farms is always a great thing to do. EOD will be used um, to create momentum at the top side of the map. But remember, the beast is still vulnerable. Because it has the opening from behind, which you might need to uh, repair. Because Aizen has no more siege weapon, so if you repair this, he can't enter. Outpost destroyed. Power points are no more useful. Going for the last remaining farms from his opponent. Lourdes is using the Speedy Gonzalez move. But Legolas, look Legolas, pew, 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 pew. He got crippled in the last possible second. Rowan has to use the Glorious Charge and also Cloud Break. Cloud Break and Glorious Charge, let's go. Does he have heal? He has heal. Do not let him die, boys. Do not let him die. He's gonna use big heal. Smart move to group all together. And Legolas will live. He's the MVP author in this game. Whatever you say, it doesn't matter. Cloud Break is still active, by the way. This uh, works are slowed down. They can't get away from this Rohirrim. And they will have to die. I mean, that's a great map, though. Great map for those Fiesta games. He's finally able to revive his Saruman, by the way. Uh, essential hero for the Isengard army. And good factions with their plenty of, of summons are not easy be, to be dealt with in the Ultra Elite game. But it's an even match of two. Ooh, 
now you make now when you are supposed to make the pikeman crossbowman combo you start making the crossbowman combo because uh, listen when he when he has only rohirrim then you need to make you know the pikeman crossbowman combination but when he has only archers or when he has a mixed army then you can still make the uruk crossbowman combination but it, he stopped making rangers i mean elves i mean he has still an opening behind boys ain't someone is available it's an ultra delete Eoma. Only rank 1. Will have a difficult time to get to rank 4. Aragorn will be finally revived. He couldn't add anything to the table. I mean, he is tanky. But, but also tankiness has his limits. When he has double leadership with the Warchan and Lourdes for the damage, he will still be able to break through your tankiness and kill you. We have the new farm. Higher rank will hit him though, rank 8, rank 8, rank 6, but everything inside the base of Eisen is also rank 3. Ultra strong, Lord's gonna be there very, very soon. His rank 6 gets at the outpost, uh, get, gets in the base. And also, Sharku. All the three Isengard heroes are in one place. Can they defend this? That's what I wanna know. Aragorn is here. Now, the thing you need to use your momentum advantage but you need a bigger army than that one actually no so when you see saruman and lords in the base then me that means the outpost here at the bottom side will be open for a potential attack it won't have the defense so you go step by step you don't want to go to the main base when eisen is still the two outposts under his control you know what i'm saying but i guess he's gonna use the aragorn for this aragorn is able to handle this himself his damage output is kind of crazy. This crosswomen are going to be doing nothing against Aragorn. Look at this. He's way too tanky for them. And someone is available. Freezing Green is on cooldown. So Lourdes. I mean, this is crazy damage. He's gonna Look, he's aiming on, on Saruman, you see? I command you defend me. Cripple. He's going to cripple. Okay, now he's going to... I think he's going to die now. Oh, he's dead. But he killed both the heroes in exchange. It's, a, it's still a big W. The problem is the economical uh, disadvantage from Rohan. He has not the money to revive his uh, <laughs> Legolas for 3,000. And, uh, and also you need to invest 2 minutes and 30 seconds to get him back on the field. But I would prioritize him, bro. I would definitely try to get him back no matter what. Aragorn in the meantime took down the outpost. Vorks are going for the map control. That's something... Oof, son. Uh, he also killed the Rohirrim. Not all of them, though. Now he's flying in. Now he want to finish what he has started before. Going for the outpost in the meantime with the Vorks, just to make sure that he can defeat the Rohan player fully. It's a production building rank 3. It won't get one-shotted. That's way too close. It's only going to hit two of them. You don't want to get that close. But you can allow yourself mistakes. He's going to use the Cloud Break for the stun on the Vorks. The Vorks should still be able to destroy the Zita. But they might not be able to destroy the remaining stuff. Because he's focused at the outpost, uh, at the main castle. He's gonna use the Breath Fire. But I think he won't be finishing off this player if he rebuilds the Zita in the last possible second. Finish. You can build. Now he has no money for the build. He could have rebuilt it, by the way. But he had no money to rebuild it. Good micro. I mean, even though he made a mistake, because Rohan base is super vulnerable, it has only 7 available spots, so it's the weakest by all means, you know? <laughs> so even if you mess up one breath fire, you can still pull it off. And you see the money advantage in the ultra late game is so essential, boys. Like, Aizen has so much more wealthiness. He has still 5.3k, even though he just got the outpost, you know? And has the chance to build up everything. In the meantime, though, Rohan is going for the main base of Aizen and destroying it too. If this is available, will he use it to finish off this castle, though? That's the big question. I hope he doesn't need to do that. The pikemen are slaughtering the Rohirrim, though. When the, sec the second the Glorious Charge is off, they will die. It's a level 10. No! I would rather lose my Legolas level 10 before losing the rank 10 Rohirrim, boys. Rain is available, will be used. Rohirrim, my death glows. Um, I don't know, bro. This is unbelievable. Rohan would still be able to win this, by the way, Loki, but he has no money. 
You see the map control is so essential. He didn't put them in the porcupine formation. If he did, they would be the death of these Rohirrim warriors. Charku is coming with the war riders. He has to build the steeple. He has not the money to revive his Ilma. Not even, I mean, of course not his Legolas, but not even his Ilma can be revived. Yeah, that's what you need to do. Send out the pikemen in the porcupine formation. Forge bleeds. Heavy armor. But Aragorn. We hear Aragorn fighting, destroying this stuff slowly but surely. The Rohirrim level 10 killing even, even the Fikeman, bro. He will be able to protect the outpost, but in the meantime, this outpost over there will be taken down. He's saving his EOD. He want to use the EOD in the best possible way. Sharku is going to die to the rank 10 Rohirrim. Theodin is trampling into this. Oh, so close. War chant. EOD has been used. Going for the Zita. It will take it down in a second. But he has only one Rohirrim remaining. One Rohirrim and the king. Theoden King stands alone indeed, boys. What can Aragorn do? The money advantage is crazy. Crazy money advantage. Six. Like he has the money to revive all of his heroes. And he has still 1200. He is playing with multiple Uruk pits simultaneously. Can ditch out more and more stuff. If he, if he loses them, it doesn't mean any, anything anymore. You can't feed in the lead game when your opponent has already every power point unlocked from the spell book. Going for the for the less durable beast, that's smart. Because the Uruk pit is also not ranked 2. So he cannot produce any pikemen. If he had one more Rohirrim, this push would be enough to finish off the beast. But I think with only... Maybe he can still do this, actually. But remember, he has only this outpost and this outpost. And this outpost is about to go down to this Berserker. He has not the money to recapture this. He has only one farm outside, one farm at the outpost. That's all the resource income he currently has. Yorin will live to see it another day. The ends are going to war. Can they finish off the remaining stuff from the castle? They might be. He's making peasants because he cannot afford anything else. <laughs> Balrog is going to be available way sooner because it has been used way sooner than the than the EOD. So in the you know then Balrog is going to be able to finish off this outpost. Can Aragorn at least get this outpost and hold it? If he gets rank 10 though, I would see a hope. Smart move with the um, peasants though. Peasants are kind of eating, kind of not eating though. They have forge blades, heavy armor, and they are rank five. The elves in the tower. Rohirrim are going to recommit. The ants are throwing rocks at the Orphank. It will go down. It's going to go down. Badrock is available though. And it's going to be used because he just cut, got this outpost under his control with the crossbowman. And all this Badrock has to do is use the breath fire. And that's going to be the end of Rohan. What a game. What a performance by the players, boys. GG well played. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, let me know in the comment section down below. Leave a like to this video. Subscribe for more videos like this in the future. I will see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself. Keep hitting like a truck. And as always, stay beyond standards. Peace out, boys.